Arms video. I'm the Cornbot, your host for today. We're talking about my new fighting rifle, my daily driver, so to speak. Now, some of you may have seen the old video I have floating around with the RGB. There it goes. It didn't extract that. Um, it be good. I'm sorry. No? That that rifle kind of didn't hold up under competition. I saw an empty case, case and come out even of the though back, I well. do really like the bullpup, I think it's... Uh, kind of a, a better concept in terms yeah. of a fighting rifle an infantry fighting rifle uh, particularly in an intermediate caliber um, i've decided to embrace kind of where the market is right now and move into something more ar-15 uh, this is seating all the way actually built onto a kp-15 what would stoner do lower receiver which is a monolithic polymer receiver which is very light. It's really light. Uh, and after shooting with one at Desert Brutality, I decided this was the way to go. Uh, I like having the ambidextrous controls, not just the safety, but also the PDQ bolt release on this side, um, which, and you'll see the chamber is empty, but this is really more convenient for uh, locking the bolts open on an empty chamber with no magazine because I can just reach up with my finger right here. I don't have to change hands. I love it. Uh, I am using a Strike Industries latchless charging handle, which gives me ambidextrous function there too. And this does also have the ambidextrous mag release. Now I went with an SLT1 trigger. Uh, this has anywhere from a four to four and a half pound trigger pull, which seems to be about where I live in terms of pull weight for, you know, for a rifle platform. Uh, I've gone with a 14 and a half inch pinned and welded with a muzzle device, a uh, ballistic advantage, heavy fluted stainless steel barrel, uh, and the reason why I went down to a 14 and a half inch from a 16, even though I think ballistically is 16 inches superior, was for balance. Uh, with a 16 inch barrel, this is just too front heavy. And so uh, by shortening that barrel up, throwing the uh, LPVO on here, and then once you add a full magazine, uh, this is very becomes very sort of center heavy uh, and a little bit easier to work with than uh, it would have been with a longer barrel. Uh, I am still using the Omega 300, though I have changed my uh, mounting system. I got away from the ASR. I found them to be a little bit finicky. Now I'm using the Dead Air Chemo system, which I find to be just better to use. Uh, I don't have to worry about the locking collar and its alignment this thing always lines up no problem i went with an over the suppressor handguard uh this is an aero precision uh just so i could kind of tuck that suppressor in there a little bit and also get my light uh with the aero sock mount out towards the end of the suppressor so that i don't have to worry about you know the barrel or the suppressor eclipsing my target some people have referred to this as my light bayonet lol uh, but that's really what it's there for is to uh, get me as close to the end of the suppressor as possible uh, the kp15 if you haven't used one these are very light uh, lower receivers it's a fixed length stock this uses the m16 a one length of pull, which is like 13 or 13 and a half inches. I find it to still be comfortable even at six foot two. Uh, and I do like that they've got the slot here through the stock for mounting the sling. Uh, this one also, because it's what would stoner do, comes with the trap door. And I'm keeping the adjustment tool for my adjustable gas block in the trap door right now. Uh, I've switched to an Aero Precision, which has 18 uh, different settings. It does have a tactile click, which is nice to be able to feel for those clicks when adjusting back and forth between suppressed and unsuppressed settings, though I try not to run this unsuppressed. Uh, but it does give me a much finer adjustment than the Strike Industries collar adjustable gas block did for gas blowback, 
much because this isn't a flow through suppressor, I still have a little bit of gas blowback. Now, you may notice I have a little bit different LPVO on here. I've gone over to the Steiner P4XI with a G1 reticle. And the reason I chose the G1 reticle is it's like 350 bucks cheaper than the other reticle that Steiner offers. It seems to be more popular. Uh, I don't have any trouble using this one with my setup. It works very good in uh, 1X as sort of the red dot substitute, which is uh, what attracts me to the LPDO to begin with. Uh, very good glass for a $500 scope. Much better than even the Strike Eagle had in terms of clarity. And I've gone down from 1 to 6 to 1 to 4 for a better field of vision. Uh, but also, I just don't need the extra magnification on a rifle chambered in 5.56. I just don't. 4X is plenty. Uh, that gets me out to 400 yards reliably with this. Uh, I am now shooting my own ammunition out of this. I've worked the kinks out of my hand load. These are 73 grain ELDs from Hornady. Uh, very happy with the performance of the ammunition in this rifle thus far. Um, I'm consistently putting down inch and a half groups off the table. Uh, if you've ever seen me out at the range, you'll notice that I don't use any range bags. They bother me. Um, I do have a sling on here right now. This is an SOE Tactical 2 to 1 convertible. I'm not as big of a fan of the bungee slings anymore. I find that they're difficult to brace off of. I much prefer this uh, bolt style sling that I got from Wells Made. Uh, and the company is working on developing some slings of our own. Uh, we hope to have those ready to go uh, for the warmer months here in Michigan. So by May or June, we're hoping to be able to introduce that product to market. So now you've seen the new rifle. Uh, hope this uh, informate this uh, video was illuminating for you as it was for me in building this thing and until next time be excellent to each other.